reported on OC News. Eight people are dead after a shooting spree in the Atlanta area. Investigators are trying to figure out if this is a hate crime aimed at Asian Americans. Orange County's COVID cases are declining. That means more businesses may open up as we move closer to the orange tier. It may be costing more to fill your tank and don't expect gas prices to decline anytime soon. How long will the sunny skies and cooler temps stay with us? These stories, plus the latest in sports and rapper Drake makes history, will have more in entertainment. OC News starts right now. Happy St. Patrick's Day, welcome, and thank you for joining us at OC News. I'm Marjorie Miranda. OC News is brought to you by the Broadcast Journalism students at Cal State Fullerton. An explosion in Ontario left two people dead and many injured. Others have been evacuated from their homes and are still waiting to go home. We go to James Lee with the update. The explosion happened to be from fireworks going off in a house and the two people who were announced dead is believed to be ad identified as 20-year-old Caesar Pies and 38-year-old Alex Pies. I have the opportunity to speak to Heaven Chan who saw the explosion. Heaven? Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. Can you tell me a little bit of what you saw because I believe you do live in the neighborhood. Tell me what did you witness? So I live about half a mile away from the incident. Um, I was just in my room and I heard a loud boom. It was the first explosion. And we thought that it might have been a earthquake. Um, so we checked around the house and we went outside and we saw a cloud of smoke. So we were just invest like staring at it, observing it and realized, we realized that um, we were staring at it and another boom happened where that was the second explosion. So it was much larger um, at a bigger scale. And that one threw us back a little and it formed a huge smoke plume in the sky. And, um, and that's when we realized like it's much more serious. And then there was another explosion, a third explosion where we saw fireworks and that's when we noticed it was from a firework, um, a bunch of fireworks. And then we heard about the tragic death of the two. And did you happen to be one of the people that were evicted from your houses or? No, um, fortunately, uh, I, I was not um, evicted from the house, evacuated from the house, um, but I've heard the surrounding neighbor, neighbors had to evacuate. I see. All right, thank you so much, Heaven. Thank you for sharing your story, I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. All right, just after 2 p.m., a fire's official issued an evacuation order, and as of now, 100 homes are still evacuated. Live in Fullerton, James Lee for OC News. Back to you, Marjorie. A 21-year-old man is behind bars, charged with shooting to death eight people in the Atlanta area. Six of those killed are Asian Americans. The suspect, Robert Long, says the shooting was not racially motivated, but the attack has sent fear surging through the Asian American community, which has seen an increase in hate-related violence over the past year. We turn now to OC News reporter Kayla Calderon, who is in the studio with the very latest. Kayla? Thank you, Marjorie. Investigators are still trying to figure out why a gunman opened fire inside three Atlanta spas. Eight people were shot dead Tuesday afternoon. Six of those victims were Asian women. It's still unclear if the violence was racially motivated. We go to CNN reporter Camila Bernal for more on the story. Within a short period of time, authorities connecting the dots. Three different spas, eight people killed, and a man who appeared to be on a mission. He apparently has an issue, uh, what he considers a, a, a sex fiction, and sees these locations as something that allows him to, uh, to, um, to go to these places, and, and it's a temptation for him that he wanted to eliminate. Seven of the victims were women. Six of those women were of Asian descent. We know 
uh, that many of the victims, the majority of the victims, were Asian. We also know that this is an issue that's happening across the country. It is unacceptable, it is hateful, and it has to stop. Authorities say it's too early to determine the motive of the shootings, but say the suspect claimed to have a sex addiction. Still, this case raising fears among Asian Americans. Whether or not the shooter intended, the effect is still the same. There's anxiety and fear in that community. President Joe Biden acknowledging this while also being cautious. Whatever the motivation here, I know that Asian Americans are in very, uh, very concern. I'm Camila Bernal reporting. As of now, the suspect is in custody and is talking to authorities. It appears the suspect, Robert Long, had planned on committing additional killings in Florida prior to being arrested. Long says he has a sex addiction and wanted to lash out at what he calls sources of his temptation. Back to you, Marjorie. According to California's reopening criteria, Los Angeles and Orange County are within reaching distance of advancing into the orange tier. This comes as a result of the decline in the daily COVID-19 case rate within the two areas. As of Monday, both counties moved into the less restrictive red tier and both are on the track to fall into the orange tier within the upcoming weeks. If this becomes a reality, it would allow them to lift all capacity limits at retail stores and shopping malls. This also means they could be allowed to raise the capacity limit at other places such as movie theaters, museums, gyms, and restaurants. Not to mention, the orange tier would authorize more leniency at wineries and breweries. A Riverside resident tests positive for the coronavirus not once, but twice. Reporter Elisa Garcia has a story. Back in July, talking through a window was the best way this Riverside household communicated to prevent spreading COVID-19. They did not expect to result to this again so soon. Jonathan Rodriguez tested positive for COVID-19 along with his sister in July 2020. And just six months later, tested positive again, except the second time around hit him even harder. Second time was a lot worse. Second time, I mean, my throat was hurting, um, headaches, fevers, chills, like longer, maybe about you know, a couple of days longer. Um, fever was a little higher. It was a little harder to shake off the fever. Um, it came to a surprise to Rodriguez because he didn't think getting infected twice was possible. Really? Like the second time? Like at first you kind of, you would hear like, oh, you can't, like the second time is like highly unlikely or things like that. And when they got into the second time, I was like, of course, like I started researching it more and apparently it's a lot more possible you can get it the second time. Rodriguez's fiance, Cassandra Garcia, was not surprised by the second infection, rather why she didn't get infected. I wasn't surprised. I never believed that they, that you couldn't get it the second time. Was it that I didn't get it at all, like either both times? Um, I'm just surprised though. <laughs> Rodriguez has fully recovered since, as him and his fiance continue practicing social distancing to keep themselves safe. I'm Elisa Garcia for OC News in Fullerton. Now for a look at politics, we go to Connor O'Brien. Thanks, Marjorie. Recall efforts against California's Governor Gavin Newsom have reached the end. With 1.5 million signatures required to trigger a special election, leaders on the Recall Newsom campaign say they have over 2 million signatures. The governor offered this statement over the mounting efforts for his recall. Yeah, I mean, look, we have the lowest threshold of the 19 states that allow a recall in the country. And all you need is about a quarter of the people that voted for Donald Trump getting this recall petition to the voters this November. So I'm anticipating it goes on. We're taking it very seriously. This is the sixth, sixth recall effort in just 25 months since I've been governor. This one appears because they got an extension from a judge to have the requisite signatures and absolutely we're taking it seriously. If Republicans do have enough valid signatures, a special election would take place in either October or November. Last night, Joe Biden sat down for an exclusive interview with ABC's George Stephanopoulos to discuss a variety of topics. Included were the president's comments about New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, who is currently facing sexual harassment allegations. Yes, I think he probably ended up being prosecuted, too. A woman should be presumed to telling the truth and should not be scapegoated and become victimized by her coming forward. 
number one. But there should be an investigation to determine whether what she says is true. Cuomo backs the president's statement asking for an investigation. While many politicians have asked him to step down, the troubled governor currently has no plans to. That's all the time we have for politics. Sending it back to you, Marjorie. Drivers are paying more in gas without even notice, noticing it. Gas prices continue increasing, affecting residents even more during this pandemic. Diana Garcia has the details. If you haven't noticed, you have been paying more money for gas. Gas prices are going up. The reason? The increase in gas demand. In the last couple of weeks, I've seen gas price go up repeatedly. About 10 cents over? Yeah. Like, I noticed this like two weeks ago. It's just a little expensive and it's hard because I have VA trucks. With more people vaccinated and with no restrictions to travel now, things are coming back to normal. I don't travel much now because of the pandemic. So it doesn't take it a big burden on my budget, but if, as we go back to normal, probably be uh, more of a worrisome. The pockets of the motorists were hit more during this weekend. In Fullerton, gas prices rose to almost $4 per gallon, increasing more concerns among drivers. But drivers want to know why here in California, gas prices are higher than other states. I've lived here my entire life. And, you know, maybe I take it for granted sometimes, but for the most part, you know, I feel like I pay for these luxuries that I don't necessarily use every day. Um, yeah, they're available to me, but I don't think, you know, just because I live here means I should necessarily have to pay more. I think it's, uh, uh, the taxes are higher here. According to U.S. Energy Information Administration, California gas prices are generally higher than other states due to distance for supply, higher cost of cleaner fuel, and state taxes. According to AAA, gas prices will be increasing until the summer. From Fullerton, Diana Garcia, reporting for OC News. After a year being closed, Disneyland has finally set a date for their reopening. Disney CEO Bob Chapek announced today that Disneyland will be reopening on April 30th after the state lifted some restrictions earlier this week. Due to COVID-19, Disneyland, as well as other California amusement parks, have been closed since March of last year. The reopening will still have COVID-19 rules, like a limited capacity of 15%, and everyone from age 2 and up will have to wear a mask to go inside the parks. Disneyland will also not be allowing out-of-state visitors until it is safe to do so. After the break, you might have to hold on to those winter sweaters a little longer. We've got your five-day forecast, plus find out what an overpopulation of wild animals did to a local park. We turn now to weather. A tornado just might hit the city of Memphis tonight and residents are busy preparing for the worst. We turn now to Diana Garcia who has the latest on what's happening in Tennessee with the tornadoes and a look at our weather here in Orange County. Diana, give us the very latest on the tornado watches in the southeast part of the country. Thank you, Marjorie. Yes, uh, we have the information about the tornado, but first let's take a look at this video.
This video was That's taken it, by the, a resident of Alabama when it was crossing uh, the freeway or highway 82. Uh, this is a dangerous tornado and it's threatening the, it's threatening the residents of Alabama and Memphis. Um, now let's back to California and Fullerton have a, a nice sunny day today. Um, let's look at the weather today. Uh, we have uh, temperatures at 67 at the high, low 45, the wind 9 miles per hour, humidity 36%, sunrise 6.59 a.m. and sunset 7 p.m. Now let's check the extended weather for the five days forecast. Uh, Tuesday was sunny and 67 at the high and 45 at the low. Wednesday is today another sunny day. Look like this week we are going to have a very sunny week. So you have to enjoy this this summer. This uh, sorry, this weather. Thursday is um, another day at 67 degrees at the high and 47 at the low. Friday we are going to have another sunny day again at 71 at the high and 54 at the low and Saturday it will be again another warm day 67 at the high and 46 at the low. Uh, this is all for now. Thank you very much for watching. A local park was recently closed due to a mountain lion sighting. Connor O'Brien has the details from Lake Forest. Cutting Ranch is home to some of the best mountain biking and hiking trails in Orange County. At 2,500 acres, the park and Lake Forest provide something for everyone. Numerous animals call this park home, but perhaps none more dangerous than mountain lions. Their recent sightings forced these signs all over the park. Candace Hubert describes two different types of mountain lion sightings. If it's what we call a bold or aggressive sighting, where a mountain lion comes right up to a, a child or a person, then we go out and investigate, make a report, and at that point we would close down the park until we don't get any mountain lion activity for a few days. Recently, a six-year-old boy came in close contact with a mountain lion, forcing this park to close. As a result, preventative measures are being taken throughout the park. Well, uh, we've increased our education. So we have, um, you know, rangers out on patrol all the time to talk to the public. Um, when we do close the park, we have staff at every single gate around the park to educate the public about mountain lions and about what to do if they see a mountain lion. Uh, we have signs at all of our kiosks. We have signs at every gate. So we have signs throughout the park. Um, educating and warning the public that it's mountain lion country. Mountain bikers applaud these efforts made by park rangers. Yeah, the park park does a good job. They, they post signs um, warning the public that there's been current recent mountain lion sightings. Um, if there's any aggressive behavior whatsoever by the mountain lions, they, they, they take uh, pre action and they, they close the park down and they will close it down for a long period of time if they have to. Reporting from just outside Whiting Ranch Wilderness Park in Lake Forest, I'm Connor O'Brien with OC News. Slam dunks and touchdowns make way for big money moves. For more on sports, we go to Sam Pena. Thank you, Marjorie. Heartbreaking news out of Utah this morning after former NBA player Sean Bradley suffered a spinal injury. The former Dallas Maverick center was hit by a car while riding his bike near his home. Bradley underwent neck fusion surgery and is currently in rehab after the injury. The former number two pick spent eight seasons with the Mavericks, endearing himself to the local community. Mavericks owner Mark Cuban quickly reacted to the news, saying that Bradley will always be a part of the Mavs family. Our hearts and prayers go out to the Bradley family. After dominating the NBA for over a decade, LeBron James looks to take over the business world. The Lakers star joined Fenway Sports Group, giving him partial ownership of the Boston Red Sox. FSG is one of the largest ownership groups in the world, owning shares in Liverpool, NASCAR, and Fenway Racing. James is already a 2% owner of Liverpool, and with his recent purchase, he becomes the first African-American man to join FSG. James has previously stated his desire to eventually own an NBA franchise. 
However, current league rules prevent active players from owning portions of NBA or WNBA teams. After growing up a Yankees fan and rooting for the Dodgers in last year's World Series, the James family has another team to root for this season. It's hard to believe, but the 2021 NFL season is already underway. With the start of free agency, the New England Patriots kicked off the spending by signing former Chargers tight end Hunter Henry. Last year's champions weren't far behind, quickly re-signing linebackers Shaq Barrett and Levante David, who played key roles in Tampa's Super Bowl run. But by far, the biggest move was announced this morning by the 49ers. Left tackle Trent Williams signed a six-year, $138 million deal, making him the highest paid lineman in league history. With this move, the Niners are clearly focused on returning to championship glory. Back to you, Marjorie. Stick around for Billboard history and more in entertainment. Also, we'll check in with a small business owner during the pandemic and a look at some St. Patrick's Day fun. You could be spreading the coronavirus without realizing you have it. So do your part and stay home. It's important to limit in-person interaction with anyone outside of your immediate household, but phone and video chat are safe ways to connect. It's also important to limit social gatherings. If you need essential items like food and medicine, try using a delivery service. If you must leave your house for essential items, or if you wanna take a walk for exercise, make sure to wear a cloth face covering. Stay at least six feet away from other people. Try not to touch frequently touch surfaces like light signals, street signs, or benches. And wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds as often as possible. This advice applies to people of any age, including teens and younger adults. It takes all of us to slow the spread of the coronavirus, so stay home unless absolutely necessary. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. A cat fight on Twitter following a controversial Grammy appearance, and musician Drake does what no other artist has done. We turn it over to Bree Eastwick for a look at entertainment news. Bree? Drake has made history on Billboard Hot 100 as the first person ever to debut three songs in the top three spots simultaneously. His single, What's Next, secured the top spot after it had 49 million streams and 19,000 downloads last week. His songs, Wants and Needs, featuring Lil Baby, and Lemon Pepper Freestyle, featuring Rick Ross, took the second and third spots on the Hot 100. This, bring Drake, this brings Drake's career total to 45 songs in the top 10, and What's Next is his eighth song ever to hit number one. With this new achievement, Drake joins the Beatles and Ariana Grande as the third person to have three songs in the first three spots on the chart. This week's Hot 100 also made history as the first time ever in the chart's 60 years to have four debut singles placed in the top four spots, with Silk Sonic's Leave the Door Open debuting at number four. And a new Twitter feud has formed between rapper Cardi B and conservative activist Candace Owens. The huge back and forth exchange started after Owens' appearance on Tuck Tucker Carlson's Fox News Fox show on Monday, where she criticized Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion's Grammy performance of their song WAP. Owens stated that it was an attack on American values and traditions and encouraged children to do inappropriate activities. Cardi B responded to the comments, first thanking Owens for putting WAP on Fox News, as well as stating that only parents can monitor what their children watch. This leads this led to more back and forth, ranging from, ra ranging from race, gender, politics, and even each other's spouses. The attack ended with both parties threatening the other with legal action. And the creator behind the hit musicals Hamilton and In the Heights, Lin-Manuel Miranda, stated that he'll be releasing a book this summer. With the release of the In the Heights movie finally reaching audiences on June 17th, Miranda recently stated that he will release his new book, In the Heights Finding Home, and it will give readers an insight to the last 20 years Miranda has spent working with the musical. It will include his first ideas on creating the 2008 stage production and what it was like working on the movie. 
This is the follow. This is the follow up to Miranda's number one New York Times bestseller, Hamilton: The Revolution. The book will be available on June twenty second, just four days after In the Heights drops on HBO Max. And that's all the time we have left for entertainment. Let's send it back to Marjorie at the anchor desk. This so-called dog rescue is being forced to leave their property. After 10 years, what does this mean for the four-legged friends who have called Mutt Match LA their home? For more on the story, we go to Kayla Calderon. What do you do when the place you've called home for over a decade is ripped from underneath your feet? This is the harsh reality Mutt Match LA is facing after their landlord blindsided them and sold their property. Months after the initial eviction notice, I came back to the rescue to see how these furry friends have been holding up. Sheila Argon, founder and director of the SoCal Rescue, says her will to survive is now bigger than ever. We would love to be able to buy enough property to not only move Mutt Match, but to have other rescues on the property, a horse rescue, because so many horses just an hour away from here are being sent to slaughter. And so there are horse, you know, rescues out there and farm animal rescues too, and create a destination for people to come and visit animals and learn a lot of education programs. And so that's the bigger picture that we would love to um, be able to do, the bigger goal. <laughs> Something that sets Mutt Match LA apart from many other SoCal dog rescues is their determination and commitment to housing over 30 sanctuary dogs. Now, if wrongfully evicted, these beautiful creatures will lose their forever home. Hi! Hi! They have until July 1st before they are displaced for good. I'm Kayla Calderon for OC News. And finally tonight, happy St. Patrick's Day. Many people enjoy the day with green beer or wear green clothes. But in Indianapolis, the tradition is the greening of the canal. This morning, officials, including the mayor, dumped green dye into the water to color the fountain and the canal. It's a tradition that's been going on there for more than 20 years. That's going to be all for us tonight here at OC News. Remember, the news never stops. Follow us on all our social media at OC News CSUF. We'll see you back here on Monday at 5 from all of us here at OC News. I'm Margie Miranda. Stay safe and have a good night.